eight mistakes that new players are pretty likely to make. That, that's what we're talking about today. I'm going to see if I can't save you from making a couple of these and maybe help you create some good habits moving forward. All right. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. The first one I want to talk about is avoiding arena, not doing arena. I understand PVP can be a little bit intimidating and very quickly as you start to climb up, you're going to start to see defenses that are going to give you a hard time, right? It's going to be a little while before you can really hang with these defenses, even up in fighter, all right? So you're going to think maybe you're not ready for arena, so you're just going to put it off. Come to us has done a great job of setting this up in a way where you don't have to fight other people to still be efficient and do what needs doing. You have a list of AI rivals here. Master X is for the Assassin's Creed one, so I don't think Master X will always be here, but all these other ones will. So you've got all these different AI opponents that'll go on cooldown after you fight them. So anytime they're available, fight them. You get seven glory points for the ones that go on cooldown. And then they've added one here named Amir who never goes on cooldown. He's always available and he's worth five glory points every time you fight him. He'll have a different team every time and his level's gonna scale with your level. Don't be intimidated by his teams. They are not hard. They are scary looking, <laughs> but they're not difficult. I'm not entirely sure they even have runes on. They're, they're all pretty easy. I go in and I auto them all. He's never beat me. He's never come close to beating me. And it's very important that you don't sit on arena wings. And here's why. There's a shop in the arena where you can spend your glory points. This right here, this weekly devil mine, I've talked about this in a couple of other videos because it's really important that you understand this is the top priority. I think it's 180 points and you can buy one per week or per month. These are very rare to come by. As you're, as you're newer and you're going through all your quests, you're gonna be getting these a little bit frequently. They might not feel as important as they actually are. They're very important and they start to get very hard to come by, all right? <clears throat> getting one per week from the arena is top of the priority list in Summoner's War. You have to do it. So come into your arena, even if you don't want to fight other people, even if you never fight another person, even if you never <laughs> look at your matchup list, go into the rival tab, clear the ones that go on cooldown, fight a mirror until you're out of wings. Never be sitting on wings, all right? Always be out of wings. And then in that shop, get your Devilmon. After you've gotten your Devilmon, there's a bunch of buildings here that are, that are very useful, all right? Sanctum of Energy increases your max energy storage. Excuse me. Mysterious Plant is gonna increase your energy recharge speed. Your speed totem here is very important. Your guard stone is now very important when you wanna start working on your, your triple uh, Ikaru team. You've got towers for all the stats and they apply everywhere in the game. It, th these are not just for arena, they're for your entire account. So all of your monsters get a speed bump when you get this tower. All of your monsters get a crit damage bump when you get this one. These are all very important, all right? Maybe we'll do a video talking about how to prioritize these. And uh, so you kind of have some direction, but a good place to start is the Sanctum of Energy, Sky Tribe Totem. And uh, it's probably not a bad idea to get the Guardstone rolling uh, because again, that, that's gonna be important later on. But we'll talk about better prioritization of these, but that's why these glory points are so important because it's gonna take thousands and thousands and thousands of them to you know level up all these buildings and again you got to make sure you're getting that devil mind don't be tempted by the scrolls and all of that stuff for now that'll come later for now your priority is the devil mind and, and your your buildings all right so do your arena that's the, that's the big one that's the big mistake is avoiding arena because you think you're not ready for it stay in the rival tab you'll be fine all right next up it's not letting the summoner's way quest guide you or or kind of trying to get ahead of them, I guess. Just let them guide you. They do a really good job of setting you up to do the next thing on the list, right? I, I, I want to find a good example here. There's one, somewhere along the lines, it'll, it'll be like, it's going to want you to awaken your water magic knight. But the mission before that's going to give you the essences to do it, okay? So just let them guide you. Let your decisions be based on the Summoner's Way quest for a while, uh, especially through Intermediate, because when you finish the Intermediate quest line, you get a Transcendent Scroll. That's a free net five. So uh, at least push your way through Intermediate 
be very deliberate in following the, the progression line through novice and intermediate. And then again, same with the dungeons. When you want to start to focus a dungeon, let these guide you through the dungeon. They're going to give you good runes. They're going to give you good resources. They're going to give you champs that are good in the dungeons. Make sure that you're letting these guide you through the game. It's going to guide you through in a way that progression feels smooth. And again, it's going to set you up for success for whatever thing it is that you've decided to focus. All right. So make sure that you're paying attention to these because they're very, very important. They're very useful. You get lots of resources from them and they're going to make sure your progression stays smooth, right? They're, they're going to kind of prevent you from making certain mistakes. So focus your summoner's way. Next up, it's it's building monster. It's building anyone for any reason. If you pull a nat five and build it immediately, that's not the healthiest thing for your progression. It's very easy to get distracted, right? The the shiny nat fives and the and the nat fours, and maybe you'll pull someone that you know is really good at something, and you'll build them right away. But they might not be the best thing for you. So so the mistake here is not building with intent everyone that you're building in the early game needs to be built for a purpose you're not quite at a stage yet where you need to be building the fun ones and that's that kind of a bummer and if you want to sneak a fun one in every now and then to keep your sanity go for it but for the most part you want to make sure you're building with intent right so so fran lauren you know, Bella, they, they might not be the most fun six stars, but they're so important. They're so useful. You know, Lauren and Fran especially are so good and they're gonna be the core of a lot of what you're doing in the early game and as you transition into the mid game. So if, if you don't have a specific purpose for a champion, don't build them, even if it's because they're really good. You know what I mean? I've got a handful of champs down here that are excellent champs that are 100% gonna get built but I don't have a purpose for them yet. I'm still squaring away my Dragon 12 farm. I'm still working my way up through Necro. I'm still sorting out all my dungeons and all of the important stuff. I'm still working my way through TOA hard for my intermediate, uh, or I'm sorry, my advanced mission. I have other things to do, so I can't build everyone I wanna build. I would love to six star Leo and Laika and, you know, Tessa and Ethna and Riley and all the other champs, but I don't, have an, I don't have a specific assignment for them yet, so they have to wait. Same with Ren. I've, I've got a lot of fun ones to build. It's very tempting. Again, it's very easy to get distracted by all of the other stuff. Uh, but but build with intent. That's that's the that's the mistake I want you to avoid here. Is just building for the hell of it. Make sure that you're building with intent while you're getting all your dungeon teams and stuff squared away. That's going to save you a lot of resources and a lot of time. Ultimately, the quicker you get your core things sorted the quicker you're gonna be able to build whoever you wanna build for whatever reason you wanna build them for, you know what I mean? So, next on the list, it is it is not getting plugged into a community somewhere. There are several really good creators for Summoner's War. I have a Discord. I'm sure that, that a few of the other guys have Discords as well. Um, there's a link to my Discord in the description if you wanna hop in mine. I have a Summoner's War section in there that's pretty active. Players of all different levels and you're going to learn a lot more a lot faster if you get plugged in. Sometimes game chat can be helpful. I would say about 80% of the time it's not going to be helpful. It's going to be trolly, which is, uh, you know, I think impossible to avoid. <laughs> but uh, find a community and get involved if you really want to get good and, and gain understanding. You're going to learn a lot. Again, no matter what level you are, even if you're a Guardian level player, talking to other players, they're almost certainly going to have something, some perspective you don't have yet right some idea about a champion or a team comp <clears throat> if you're early you can ask questions and you'll get answers from players of different skill levels that might apply to you or your account a little better <clears throat> but you'll again it's going to help you out so much to get plugged in somewhere and get involved with a community so i think that's a really good thing to do again my discord's linked below i'm sure several of the other guys have discords as well find find a community and get plugged in some chats have a lot of regulars maybe you'll get lucky and find a good chat that that has a lot of regular people that that specifically go to that chat uh, that chat room every time they log in and uh, and, ma and maybe that could be I, know, I think there's a lot of communities within the game through different chats as well so um just get involved ask some questions get some help get some perspective it's gonna be really really good for you Moving 
right along. It's selling runes because the substats aren't great. You're you're when you're very early in the game, you're kind of just keeping everything you get that's usable to any degree. But at a certain point, you're going to start to get a little bit pickier, and maybe you're going to start selling runes when 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 the substats don't line up the way that you want them to. So, uh, where's a good example? Where's a good example of a rune here? I've got some decent runes already, so uh, it's, we, we have to find... I should have done this before I started the video. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll make one up. Let's say this vampire rune had flat defense, flat HP. We'll leave the accuracy sub. And then, I don't know, resistance. It's like, it's not great, but... You can you can do something about that now. A long time ago, none of this existed, but now there are reappraisal stones where we can completely reroll the substats on a rune. There's enchantments where you can grind, where you, where you can remove and replace a substat. There are, um, th and that's these. Then you can amplify certain substats with these. There's lots of ways to rework a rune now. So especially something like a slot two speed rune, of any given set, maybe you get a slot two speed rune that's fatal, but it's got it's got a lot of tanky substats. So you're like, eh, not so great. It could be great. It could be great with a reappraisal stone. So we'll, we'll do a video later on talking about reworking your runes and being efficient with your reappraisal stones and and things of that nature. Uh, but for now, just understand if you get a six star legendary rune with a good main stat, even if the subs are bad, hang on to it. And that might sound obvious to some, but again, there's a lot of information to take in here. And some of this stuff is easy to overlook. And you might think you're doing the right thing by, by being real picky with your runes, but you might also get rid of a rune that could have been amazing. So again, we'll talk more about that in detail, but any, any rune, I would say six star rune that has a good main stat, it's probably worth keeping even if the subs are bad for a while. Again, later on, that probably changes a little bit, but anybody watching this video, keep good good main stat runes, all right? Next is avoiding your fusions. The, thinking that the fusions are too much for you to do as a new player. So putting them off until you're a little bit further in the game, uh, that's a huge, huge mistake. You wanna start worrying about fusions immediately. From the jump, you wanna start paying attention to fusions. You wanna, you wanna decide on a fusion and start working on it, okay? They have really filled this in from back in the day. This used to be a lot different. And the quality of some of the champs, the fact that Verd's in here is insane to me. There were people that played for, you know, three plus years back in the day and never got Verd, and now he's a fusion that you can do pretty much immediately. I mean, that that's insane, but these are not as hard as you think they are. Yesterday, for example, I did the Fire Panda almost completely from scratch. I think I already had the Water Horus. I pulled him from a Mystical. Everyone else I didn't have, I think. I can't remember exactly, but uh, but we, we did the, the bulk of it. We had to, I know we had to fuse the Fire Succubus. We may have, I don't remember if we had to fuse her or not, but we did a lot. We had to bring the Fire Viking up from three star. We had to fuse the Fire Succubus. We had to awaken them all. We had to max them. We had to five star them. We had to max them again and do the Fire Panel. We did it all in a day. So it's not as overwhelming as it seems. It seems like so much work and it seems so convoluted, but it's not. And the, the quicker you start focusing these and adding these champs to your roster, the better off you're going to be because another thing they've done a really good job of is putting usable champs in here. Veramos, we've talked about. Veramos is very popular. You know how good Veramos is. Sigmaris is amazing. Riley is amazing. Fire Panda is really good at a few things. I think her name's Janine, right? She's also excellent. I don't know much about him, but I've heard good things. Katarina, again, kind of specific, but the specific thing Katarina is good at, she's real good at. So we'll do a video talking about fusion priorities soon. But in the meantime, if you just want a quick reference, Veramos, Riley, and Sig are great first options. Um, so so pick a fusion. If it's your first day playing the game, pick a fusion and, and, and start working it out. 
start getting the champs together for it. A lot, a lot of the time you can come down here and fuse the four stars you need for the five stars up here. There's also a handful of really good four stars down here that you're gonna want multiple copies of. You're gonna want three Melias, for example, uh, ultimately, because you need one for Riley and then you need two for your GB speed team. So um, get in here and get familiar with the fusion hexagram. It is not as, as overwhelming as it seems like it is. Get started on the fusions immediately, all right? This next one is like the holy grail of new player mistakes. So many new players do it. I did it when I was new. I did a, I did a real bad version of it too. Uh, it's, it's using Nat 4s as food to rank up the champs that you're building. It's going to be very tempting. You're going to want to get the champs built that you want to get built quick. And if you've been doing some summons, you've probably pulled some Nat 4s and you're going to want to use them as food. You, you just can't do it. You can't. <laughs> especially if you're newer and you don't know you don't know the landscape right you might feed someone who's really good you might feed someone who's part of a fusion you might feed someone who gets buffed later you might feed someone that no one knows is good yet there, there's so many reasons not to do it so especially nat fours even if you're not going to build them even if everyone's telling you they're the worst nat four in the game just put them in your storage and forget they're there okay you, you can't use nat fours as food unless you are going to be a moderate to big spender and you're going to be getting lots of copies of them because you're going to be summoning all the time anyway. And even then, you have to be real careful because maybe you pull an element of a certain Nat 4 that's bad, but they could be a skill up for the one that's good. You know what I mean? You have to be real careful about Nat 4s. So my advice is don't ever use them as food. Put them in your storage. Put them in your sealed monster shrine. Forget they're there until you find a purpose for them, whether it's to build them for certain content or use them as skill ups for someone else or whatever it may be, be very careful. It's not a bad idea to apply that to three stars as well. Um, you, as you go on, it gets a little bit more comfortable to use certain three stars as food. LD monsters, light or dark, don't use any of them as food. Put them all in storage because again, you never know and they're a lot harder to come by. Light, dark, nat threes, might be more rare than most nat fours at this point and light dark nat fours are borderline nat fives in regular scrolls so be don't feed light dark monsters at all definitely don't feed nat four regular elements i advise you not to not to feed a lot of nat three until you start to get to a grasp if they're farmable not as big of a deal if, if they're not as good not as big of a deal they're a little bit easier to come by but don't use your nat fours as food all right I fed a dark samurai <laughs> when I said I did a worse version of it because uh, none of the samurai used to be good or at least no one knew at the time they were good and I had a dark one sitting in my vault forever and I needed food one day and I was like you know what I'm never going to build this dude I've had him forever and I'm not doing anything with him I'll just use him as food and a week later Platano put out a video uh, about Tosi who's the light samurai and they're basically the same being his his nuker in arena and he was crazy good and he was never at an elemental disadvantage just fantastic i was like man i, I just fed my dark samurai <laughs> thankfully i pulled another one a few months later but either way don't do it all right don't do it and then last and certainly not least is the mistake you want to avoid is to to not be farming at any given time this this building right here the, re the repeat battle building if it is not glowing, you are playing the game wrong, okay? There is no reason not to have this going. Be somewhere in here. Be somewhere. Be in Giants, be in Dragon, be in Dimensional Hole, be in Scenario Farming Food, be in an Essence Dungeon. Be somewhere all the time. There is no reason not to be. You are wasting your time if this is not lit up, all right? You can do so many other things while that's going. You can do TOA, you can do arena, you can do guild content, you can do the event dungeon that's open right now. You can do world boss, you can do, <laughs> there's so many other things you can be, you can re decorate your island, you can manage your rooms, you can sort your champ storage out. So many other things you could be doing while that's, while that's going. If you're not doing it, you're wasting your time, all right? You need to be accumulating runes, you need to be making food, you need essences. You need to be two Aang monsters. You need all of these things and you need them in, in a massive, massive quantity. 
So to, to not be farming is to not be progressing, basically, right? This, this, this is such a nice feature, and for a long time we didn't have it. So if we, if we needed to farm dragon all day, we just had to farm dragon all day. And that was all we were able to do <laughs> all day long. Um, now you can farm dragon all day and get so much else done surrounding it. So uh, again, have it somewhere where you can see it by default, have it on your main island so it's always in your vision. And if it's ever not glowing, if it's ever not in action, fix that. You, you need to be farming something, okay? Um, and that's it. Those are, I think, I think those are all pretty important. I think we, I think it was eight, eight mistakes to avoid. So uh, if, if there's anything I didn't talk about here that you want to drop in the comments below, that would be great. If you're a newer player and you've made a mistake that I didn't talk about, or, you know, you've been playing for a while and you made a mistake when you were newer that you want to drop below that you think will help someone, that would be amazing. Got a couple of other videos we're going to work on soon. We'll do one about fusion priority. Uh, if, if you have any other questions or any other topics you would like to see a video on, drop that below too. I'm not opposed to uh, some suggestions from some newer players about some things that you're unsure of. I'd be happy to go into more detail in some of the other systems in the game. So uh, any requests you have, any other tips you have, all that stuff, drop it in the comments below. I will read them. I do hope it was helpful. Hopefully we save you from, from making a mistake or help you create better habits moving forward. And that's it. I'm getting out of here. Subscribe if you want to. And we'll see you later.